Explosive barrels are everywhere. They're probably one of the biggest cliches of video games. So much so that even declaring them cliché is getting pretty old itself. But what's most surprising is that they carry on unabated. Contemporary FPS games are more likely than not to have some kind of explosive scenery. Games are perhaps more coy with their use than they have been in the past. Barrels tend to be an occasional feature rather than being liberally sprinkled throughout every single level. But still, if you look, you'll find them. Some games do mix things up a little, deviating from barrels in favour of something like propane tanks or even cars. Others inject a little variety by introducing types of barrel. The Borderlands series has elemental ones with different effects, for instance. And Mass Effect has similar explosive containers that come in a variety of flavours. Sometimes games will feature metagame elements to incorporate environmental kills. Bulletstorm is perhaps the most notable example, which rewards unique kills with extra points. Call of Juarez Gunslinger is similar. These expanded mechanics serve as justification for including explosive barrels, but some games embrace them wholeheartedly with no shame whatsoever. The Just Cause series has a certain degree of camp character, so even the gamiest video game ingredient fits right in. The Far Cry series is similar, particularly Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Its veneer of irony protects a celebration of video game tradition, and it's all the more glorious because of this. Honestly, barrels are pretty great, despite overuse. And I think my favourite barrels have to be those seen in Half-Life 2. Unlike most explosive barrels, shooting them just a couple of times won't immediately detonate them, but it will set them alight with the flames gradually taking hold until an inevitable explosion. The visible anticipation makes for a great trap, and one that works both ways. They're a powerful tool, particularly when paired with the gravity gun, and you quickly learn to respect them. In many ways Half-Life 2 was a tech demo, an attempt to innovate within the increasingly stale FPS genre. And while some of its physics-based puzzles can be tiresome, they definitely did barrels right. So, barrels are everywhere, they have been for some time, and they seem to centre on first-person shooters. Since their early beginnings, they've been quite a natural pairing. From Half-Life, to Quake, GoldenEye, Shadow Warrior, Duke Nukem 3D, the barrels, or barrel-like objects, are present. Clearly, these games share a common influence. You might suspect Doom, and you'd be right. Doom is festooned with explosive barrels, generously populating most levels and proving quite useful for taking out enemies standing nearby. Doom 2 even has a level devoted to them, Barrels of Fun, although it's more of an exercise in not blowing yourself up. Otherwise, as a general rule of thumb, if you see a barrel, you shoot it. So, we know Doom has explosive barrels, that much is self-evident. But why does Doom have explosive barrels? Its earlier game, Wolfenstein 3D, also had barrels. But they weren't explosive. That was Doom's innovation. So what inspired the extra volatility? From a gameplay perspective, Doom draws heavily from the arcade games of the late 1980s. Shoot 'em ups and action RPGs, mostly. In fact, Doom is an action RPG at its core. The monster-slaying, key-hunting gameplay loop is taken straight from Gauntlet. Atari's 1985 arcade game might not be 3D, but the influence on its games is clear. But there are no barrels to be seen here. Certainly no explosive ones. So what about shoot 'em ups They were never shy of explosions, but what about barrels? One of the most definitive shooters of this era was Operation Wolf. Like most of the military-themed games of the day, it was heavily informed by action movies. Essentially, an amalgam of Rambo and Commando. And the setting? Basic military base. A few sandbags, watchtowers, and, quite often, some barrels. Opwolf does indeed feature barrels, but they're just set dressing. Shooting them does nothing. To be fair, 
Along with crates, barrels are a very common element in video game scenery. This is probably because they're universal. Like shipping containers or monoblock chairs, they're divorced from geography. An oil drum is an oil drum the same anywhere in the world. So, as scenery, the common barrel is prevalent. Zybots, a pseudo 3D May shooter, has them as obstacles on some levels. Devastators and Dynamite Duke also seen them strewn about military style locales. But of all of this era's military themed shoot em ups, the one most focused on destruction has to be Cabal. Walls, buildings, tanks, everything is destructible in Cabal. There's the usual parade of military sprites, and if you look carefully, in some later levels you will spot some barrels. And as with everything else, if you shoot them, they explode. I don't think they do any damage, so they're not quite the same as the explosive barrels we're familiar with, but we're definitely getting closer. Now, Rambo can take much of the blame for the popularity of the military theme, and in 1989, there was an officially licensed Rambo 3 game for the arcades. It actually does feature proper explosive barrels, and they can be quite useful, injuring enemies in the blast. The funny thing is that the Rambo movies themselves don't really have explosive barrels in them. There are plenty of explosions, and a few barrels, but on screen, the two aren't really connected. Also from 1989, and also taking heavy inspiration from Rambo, was the third in the Ikari Warriors series, Ikari 3 The Rescue. Explosive barrels make occasional feature, nice big red ones that flash before exploding. There are also elements from popular beat-em-ups of the day, weapon pickups, and a departure from the commando-style gameplay of the previous two Ikari games in favour of more hand-to-hand -hand combat. Another great example of true explosive barrels is SNK's NAM 1975, released in 1990, with copious amounts contained within one industrial-themed level. They present a hazard early on, rolling by on a conveyor belt and exploding when shot. By the end of the level there are even more, two types in fact. Your classic red explosive barrel and a slightly more dangerous purple barrel which leaves a toxic cloud after detonation. So there are a few examples of explosive barrels that predate Doom, and it's possible that one of these games, knowingly or not, served as the influence for id. But there's a slight incongruity. Doom's barrels are nuclear, filled with a green toxic sludge. So where did that come from? Well, after the Three Mile Island accident in 1979 and Chernobyl in 1986, anti-nuclear sentiments were quite mainstream, and the question of what to do with nuclear waste was a hot topic, with the 55-gallon drum a standard unit of this toxic problem. This ecological concern even permeated children's television. Think of Captain Planet, Toxic Crusaders, even the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It's not unreasonable to assume that it were influenced in a similar way, but there is another potential factor. Doom was originally going to be a licensed alien game. It's why there are space marines, sci-fi bases, and ethically questionable megacorps. The third alien film came out in 1992, during Doom's development, and there is one particularly relevant sequence. Bereft of weapons and facing a deadly alien threat, the inhabitants of the prison colony turned to a stockpile of mining supplies instead, a volatile compound called quinitracetylene. Naturally, it's stored in 55 gallon drums, toxic and highly combustible. It's difficult to know exactly what inspired id to include explosive barrels, so I emailed John Romero and I asked him. His reply? We felt that shooting a barrel full of toxic waste should explode, and that it would be another great way to kill demons, so we made that happen. So maybe explosive barrels were just a product of the zeitgeist. An inevitability given the new potential of 16-bit machines and a background of action cinema. What we do know is Doom was the catalyst for a subsequent explosion of popularity. But even so, it wasn't the first. We've uncovered a few prior examples 
But the question remains, what was the first game to feature explosive barrels? The late 80s were the heyday of action films, and if we look to movie tie-ins like Lethal Weapon and the Aliens arcade game, we can find examples of explosive barrels. I mean, it makes sense. Explosions are a staple of the action genre. Barrels, grenades, rocket launchers, the more the merrier, right? The barrels in the Aliens arcade game surprised me, however. While Alien 3 did feature barrels in the 1992 movie, the Aliens arcade game came out in 1990 and was loosely based on the second Alien film. Neither Alien nor Aliens feature barrels, however, so their addition to the Konami arcade game must take inspiration from somewhere else. If we track back through Konami's catalogue, there was another big licensed game released the year before. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. It too features explosive barrels. You can tell these are early examples, as the barrels have danger written on the sides. Clearly this was a time before red barrels were a universally known cliché. But 1989 was a good year for them. There was a definite surge of examples. And at least a couple were prompted by the release of License to Kill, the 16th James Bond film. There are a few barrels seen in the film, notably in the opening gunfight, but they're not explosive. Volatile liquids do play a major role in the story, however, and a number of fuel tankers do spectacularly explode at the film's climax. There was a licensed game released for a number of platforms the same year, which loosely follows the events of the film. The second level sees Bond on foot versus some bad guys, and there are a large number of barrels throughout the level. In the film, the barrels simply leak when shot, but in game, they explode, forming a crater and killing any adjacent enemies. Perhaps seeking to capitalise on the new Bond release, Data East released Sly Spy the same year, and it too features explosive barrels. It draws from a mix of previous Bond films, notably The Spy Who Loved Me, The Man with the Golden Gun, and Moonraker. It seems barrels are desirable decor for evil lairs. Then there's the military lot, Ikari 3, Rambo 3, both from 1989, and both of which feature true explosive barrels. As soon as we roll back to 1988, however, there is a sudden disappearance. There are plenty of games that feature barrels as scenery, and there are even some that have destructible barrels. Cabal, for instance, and the 1988 Robocop arcade game, where foreground scenery can be shot quite satisfyingly. But as far as explosive barrels go, I was only able to find one example from this year. It's a military-themed beat-em-up, SNK's POW Prisoners of War. It's quite unusual in that it combines the military theme normally seen in shoot-em-ups with the formula established by beat-em-ups, like Double Dragon. In fact, I think it's this brawler influence that has led to the inclusion of barrels. In Double Dragon, there are a variety of weapons you can pick up from the ground, and barrels are one of them. They're not explosive, but they were quite prominent, and most beat-em-ups post-1987 took notes from Double Dragon. It's why Final Fight had barrels. It's why Street Fighter II had barrels. Prisoners of War took this beat-em-up formula and added guns. And from there, somebody asked the question, what happens if you shoot the barrels? The obvious answer was an explosion. So, is POW the first game to feature explosive barrels? Well, not quite. I was able to find just one earlier example. It's not a shoot 'em up, nor a brawler, but a driving game. It's an arcade game from 1986 called Speed Rumbler, top down car combat in the vein of Spy Hunter. Its barrels were a major part of gameplay, so much so that an explanation of how they work appears on the cabinet art. Blue barrels turn into red barrels when hit, and red barrels explode. Avoid them if you can, and lure enemies into them where possible. 
It's a little different to your typical red barrel, but the elements are there. And this might be the very first example. So, why does Speed Rumbler have barrels that explode? When it comes to dystopian car combat, there really is only one clear influence. And that is Mad Max. Like any good action film, it is full of explosions. And the common oil drum is a symbol of its core theme. Mad Max is rooted in the oil crises of the 1970s, which dominated headlines both in 1973 and 79. And what were the units of oil in the news? Barrels. So, Speed Rumbler is an interesting fusion of arcade genres, with a healthy dollop of Mad Max on top. I also think there's a little bit of Donkey Kong in there. You've got to understand, Donkey Kong was a massive hit in the arcades, and a lot of early games emulated Nintendo's success. And if we're talking about barrels in video games, Donkey Kong becomes impossible to ignore. If ever there were iconic barrels, these are they. There were countless clones for 8-bit home systems, and it influenced many more platformers that followed. As a general rule of thumb, if you see a barrel featured in any video game pre-1986, it's probably because of Donkey Kong. So, why did Donkey Kong have barrels anyway? How did the humble barrel break through into video game convention? One of the key influences was classic American film. 1933's King Kong is the obvious one. Popeye is another. And I also think there's a bit of Buster Keaton in there. Ladders, platforms, barrels are all mainstays of physical comedy. And the latter feature prominently in What? No Beer from 1933. In one scene, a truckload of barrels roll down a steep hill, with Keaton attempting to flee their path. It's a striking visual, and it may have inspired Donkey Kong's cascade. The thing about barrels is, like boulders, they lend themselves to intuitive design. They're common enough that we understand them just by seeing them. We know their approximate size, and we can infer their weight. That's why slapstick comedy uses them. There's no setup required, and we can assess the danger of a barrel rolling towards us at a glance. It's almost primal. That's why Donkey Kong used them, and why nobody questions a life lost when one strikes you. Certainly nobody has mistaken them for a power-up, at least not more than once. Arcade games need to communicate their mechanics quickly, as it might be the player's first time, so conventions and cliches became very useful. We intuitively know that spikes are dangerous, fire is hot, and pitfalls perilous and barrels became bright red to communicate their explosive nature. Akin to apisemitism in nature, bright colours stand out and serve as a warning. Even when they're a dull grey, it doesn't take long for players to work out what they do, even if their first encounter leads to accidental death. It's likely there would still be explosive barrels in a world without doom, but its influence ensured the convention would take hold. Doom's success guaranteed imitation from other FPS games, but there's more to barrels than that. Barrels add a sliver of strategy in a genre often devoid of it, a secondary target that, if timed right, can deal more damage more quickly than targeting enemies individually. Most of all, though, it's because taking out multiple enemies at once with a single shot satisfies. It feels powerful. Like the Super Shotgun, barrels felt good. They still feel good today. In becoming a cliché and through overuse, the explosive barrel has become an increasingly useful part of video game design. They have been installed as a near universal convention and a fundamental phrase in the language of games. Yes, explosive barrels are ever used, Yes, they are everywhere. But even today, you can't beat a classic. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, farewell.